Hello dear students and English teaching specialists. Welcome to a new lecture. Today we have a significant lecture focusing on performance-based assessment. The main items of this lecture will be 1. The definition of assessment in education. 2. The definition of performance-based assessment or PBA. 3. The classifications of PBA. 4. The types of performance-based assessment. 5. Rubrics is an essential component of performance-based assessment. 6. The features of an effective performance-based assessment. 7. Why should we replace traditional assessment with performance-based assessment? Before we dig deeper into this topic, let's have an introduction to assessment. Assessment plays an important role in teaching and learning as it measures and evaluates whether learners have achieved the expected goals and have met the learning objectives and expectations. In addition, it refers to a wide range of methods that educators use to assess learners at different levels of learning. Now let's move on to the first item which is about the definition of assessment in education. In education, the term assessment refers to the wide variety of methods or tools that educators use to evaluate, measure, and document the academic readiness, learning progress, skill acquisition, or educational needs of students. Consequently, instructors can make decisions regarding instruction, curricula, and learners' proficiency and performance. The current item focuses on the definition of performance-based assessment. Here is the first definition according to Hibbert et al. 1996. Performance-based assessment represents a set of strategies for the application of knowledge, skills, and work habits through the performance of tasks that are meaningful and engaging to students. While Furman 2005 defines it as, it is an alternative form of assessment that moves away from traditional paper and pencil tests to performance-based assessment. Besides, Oberg defines it stating that it is one or more approaches for measuring student progress, skills, and achievement and that performance assessment is the ultimate form of linking instruction with the assessment. Here is the classification of performance-based assessment. In this classification, there are two types of assessments. The first one is process-oriented performance-based assessment. The second type is product-oriented performance-based assessment. In process-oriented performance-based assessment, assessment must be done during the performance of the task when the student is doing the steps. The best two examples of process-oriented performance-based assessment are presentation and role play, while in product-oriented performance-based assessment, the assessment focuses on the final product which involves the implementation of higher-order thinking skills. This means that learners can demonstrate the skills which refer to their understanding of the task. The best examples of this type are writing an academic topic, story writing competition, retelling a story, an arts exhibition. The second classification of performance-based assessment relies on the responses to questions or assessments. Therefore, we have two types of assessments. The first one is restricted response performance-based assessment. The second one is extended response performance-based assessment. In the restricted response performance-based assessment, the response is usually limited to a specific number of words or a short paragraph. In addition, questions may begin with a multiple choice or short answer but then ask for an explanation or justification. Meanwhile, in extended response performance-based assessment, the response is usually longer and may require the students to provide a detailed explanation or analysis of their approach and the reasoning behind their decisions. In the next item, we are going to discuss the types of PBA. The types of PBA can be summarized in the following lines. Presentation A presentation is a way for students to demonstrate their knowledge and skills by presenting information to an audience, either in person or online. Presentations may take the form of oral presentations, posters, or multimedia presentations. Simulation A simulation is a way for the student to practice and demonstrate their skills in a simulated environment, such as a virtual laboratory or a role-playing game. Portfolios A portfolio is a collection of the student's work that demonstrates their progress and achievement over time. Performance a performance is a way for the student to demonstrate their skills through a physical or creative activity, such as an acting performance. Projects A project is a task that involves the student completing a specific task or creating a product, 
such as a research paper or a lesson plan. Essays. Essays may take the form of research papers, argumentative essays, or descriptive essays. Rubrics is an essential component of performance-based assessment. Rubrics are used to evaluate a student's work by providing a clear and explicit set of criteria for assessing their performance. A rubric typically consists of a scoring guide that outlines the expectations for each level of performance, ranging from poor to excellent. Rubrics are designed to be objective and transparent, providing students with a clear understanding of what is expected of them and how they will be assessed. This can help to reduce anxiety and ensure that students are better prepared to meet the demands of the task. Rubrics can also be used to provide feedback to students, helping them to identify areas where they need to improve and providing guidance on how they can do so. There are several features that can make a performance-based assessment effective in the educational field. These features can be displayed as follows. Validity. An effective performance-based assessment should be valid, which means that it should accurately measure the skills or knowledge that it is intended to assess. Reliability. A good performance-based assessment should be consistent in the results it produces, so that the same student would get the same score if they took the assessment multiple times. Fairness. It means that performance-based assessment should not be biased or discriminatory against any particular group of students. Authenticity. A good performance-based assessment should closely reflect the real-world tasks or situations that students may encounter in their future studies or careers. Constructive feedback. A good performance-based assessment should provide students with detailed feedback on their strengths and weaknesses so that they can improve their skills and knowledge. Engaging and challenging. A good performance-based assessment should be engaging and challenging for students so that it motivates them to perform their best. Aligned with learning objectives, an effective performance-based assessment should be aligned with the learning objectives of the course or program, so that it assesses the skills and knowledge that students are expected to acquire. Practical and feasible. A good performance-based assessment should be practical and feasible to administer, so that it does not place an undue burden on teachers or students. Here we arrived at the question that we have to answer before ending this lecture. The question is, why should we replace traditional assessment with performance-based assessment? In order to have a clear answer to this question, we should direct our speech to the disadvantages or criticisms of traditional assessment and compare this to performance-based assessment. Traditional assessment has been criticized in a considerable amount of literature in the form of multiple choice questions, matching items, true, false, and pencil and paper tests, as being inadequate, invalid, and insufficient to measure language learners' competencies and meet their unique needs and expectations. Instead, performance-based assessment is meant to measure what students can do with their knowledge, rather than just their knowledge itself. It is a way to assess students' ability to apply what they have learned in a real-world or problem-solving context. Moreover, it can help students to develop higher-order thinking skills such as analysis, synthesis, evaluation, and creation. It can be inferred from this comparison that traditional assessment should be replaced with a performance-based assessment to have a better evaluation. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and enjoyable. If you liked what you saw, Please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And as always, feel free to leave a comment below with any questions or feedback. Until next time, take care and stay tuned for more.